Mr. Bacchus, you're going to take yes. five minutes. All right. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you, Chairman Water. Uh, Secretary Barr, uh, as professor of, of, um, at the University of Michigan Law School, uh, you, along with the Harvard professor, uh, Elizabeth Warren, are widely recognized as uh, the chief architects of the conceptual framework behind the uh, Consumer Financial Protection Agency. Um, and I want to ask you a few questions about the reasoning behind the Consumer Financial Protection Agency, because I think you're probably best able to give us that answer. You're, you are Professor Warren. Uh, in a 2008 paper, uh, you published Behavioral Informed Financial Services Regulation. That's been referred to in many articles about the new agency. Uh, you advocated repeatedly for limiting consumer choice and expressed concerns about consumers having too much choice. Uh, is the proper role of, uh, of the government to limit consumer choice, or is that a part of, uh, of what this new agency would do? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would not characterize my article at all about, uh, uh, about behavioral regulation is about limiting choice. It's about understanding how people make decisions in the real world and taking that into account in the structure of regulation. So, for example, if a borrower is going to be offered a pay option arm, uh, shouldn't they have the benefit of knowing what the risks and costs of that are in relation to a regular arm? The basic idea behind the approach is let's give people the tools they need to make better financial decisions. So on the credit card bill, one of the things the Congress did is to ha require the credit card companies to say, what are the actual consequences of only paying the minimum balance? The actual consequence in terms of additional time and cost to pay off a credit card bill. And I think that's an important behavioral tool that is good regulation, that's smart regulation. That's the kind of regulation the Consumer Financial Protection Agency would be uh, empowered to offer. It empowers people to make better decisions. It doesn't limit consumer choice. It provides room for innovation, but it provides protection for consumers when they need it. Well, you know, you say you wouldn't want to limit choice, or you that's not what the article said, but uh, <clears throat> in fact, it says uh, product regulation would also reduce uh, emotional pressures related to potential bad decision making by reducing the number of choices. Uh, right. So in that article, I'm describing in distinction to product regulation, which has certain costs associated with it to financial innovation, I offer an alternative to that that is less restrictive in the marketplace. So the particular provision that you're describing is describing a form of regulation that is heavier handed than the one that I prefer okay. and I advocated for in the article. So you're, you're you're advocating a, in the article a more heavy-handed approach than, than you're now advocating? No, the article is describing a lighter approach to regulation. In the particular provision you're referring to, I'm contrasting the form that I prefer to the form that you're describing. Okay. Um, you say here individuals consistently make choices that uh, they themselves agree diminish their own well-doing in significant ways. Um. So yes, the empirical literature, uh, uh, Representative Backus, suggests that in many instances, consumers make decisions that they later regret, and that if they had been given full information about the financial consequences of their decisions, they would have made different choices. So, so if we're able to empower them in advance with a knowledge about what those decisions actually would mean to them, they're likely to make much better decisions. So the new agency would not either make those choices or suggest certain choices to them or, or maybe establish a, a, a government proposed solution? Th that's right, Mr. Backus. I think there is some misunderstanding, for example, about the idea of standard products. The idea of standard products is what I articulated before. So if you offer somebody a pay option arm, you should give them a base case comparison. So a, a pay option arm poses the following kinds of additional risks as compared to, say, a, a, a hybrid arm, a 5-1 arm uh, with the following characteristics. It's a way of anchoring consumer decision making 
uh, so they can make better choices. So you're not going to suggest a certain choice to them? The government suggests the choice? Yeah. No, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Green. Thank you, Madam.